واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل واحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اعاذنا الله واياكم منها ثم اما بعد جاء من حديث ابي سعيد الخضري رضي الله تعالى عنه فيما رواه احمد في مسنده فيما رواه احمد في مسنده وابن حبان في صحيحه ان النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم قال اياكم الجلوس في الطرقات فقالوا يا رسول الله ما لنا بد من مجالسنا نتحدث فيها فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اما اذا ابيتم فاعطوا الطريق حقها فاعطوا الطريق حقه قالوا وما حقه قال صلى الله عليه وسلم غض البصر وكف الاذى والامر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر was reported ان مسند الامام احمد ان الادب المفرد بل البخاري likewise was reported by ibn hiban in his sahih and al kharaiti in the book makarim al akhlaq in the hadith of abi sa'id al khudri radiyallahu anhu that the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said iyyakum yani uhadhirukum iyyakum meaning i warn you from sitting in the streets i warn you from sitting in the streets they said ma lana buddum minha they said that we don't have a choice we have nowhere else to sit there are our majalis there are the places where we gather and congregate and sit and we don't have a choice this is where we conversate and talk and the likes the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said then if you refuse then if you refuse and give the street it's right then give the street it's right they said oh messenger of allah and what is it's right he said ghaddu al basar it is that you lower your gaze wa kaffu al adha and that you withhold from harming anyone wal amru bil ma'ruf wa nahi 'anil munkar and that you order with the good and forbid the evil and that you order with the good and forbid the evil fal aslu fi turuqat min ahd an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ila yawmina hadha annaha laysat lil jurus and so the basic rule pertaining the streets is that from the time of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam up into the times in which we live that they are not to be sat within and congregated within unless a person meets a number of conditions a number of dawabit a number of guidelines that were mentioned by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and these guidelines they clarify for us the mafasid and the adrar and the shurur of al jurus fi turuqat they clarify for us the harms and the evils that come about by sitting and congregating in the streets فمنها التعرض للفتنه والنظر الى الحرام so from those evils that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam alluded to is a person subjecting themselves to fitna putting themselves in a position where they will be tried putting themselves in a position where they will look at the haram ومنها الاطلاع على احوال الناس 
وأغراضهم وإلى مغريات الدنيا and from the mafasid and from the hands is that by sitting and congregating in the streets the people will observe what everyone else is doing and they will observe what everyone else is purchasing and bringing into their home and they will observe those things that are temptations from the dunya what everyone else has what everyone else is wearing what everyone else is driving وَمِنْهَا and from the evils of sitting in the streets is مُشَاهَدَةَ munkarat is that it causes a person to observe a multitude of munkarat a multitude of evils for which he is responsible for ordering the good or forbidding the evil or at least hating it in his heart and if he hated it in his heart he wouldn't be around it and he wouldn't be in a position where he would observe it and would feel, comfort- and would feel comfortable being near it so the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam he explained to us أَنَا الْأَصْلَ فِي الْتُرُقَاتِ أَنَّهَا لَيْسَتْ لِلْجُلُوسِ that the basis, that the basis and the basic rule dealing with the streets is that we are not to sit and congregate in the streets. Unless a person can be saved, unless a person can be safe from the evils involved and from the harms involved. وَإِنَا نَحْنُ مِنْ هَذَا And where in the world are we from that? And their streets were not our streets. And their communities were not our communities. And their neighborhoods were not our neighborhoods. وَمِنْ أُصُولِ الْإِسْلَامِ الْعَظِيمَةِ And from the tremendous fundamentals of Islam is البعد عن الفتنة البعد عن الفتن والقلاق والبلاوي Is that a person distances himself from problems and chaos and from calamities and crime and so on and so forth. And so when we look at the situation of the streets Especially in neighborhoods, تكثروا فيها الجرائم والقتل والترويج للمخدرات In which there is a lot of fitna Neighborhoods in which there is a lot of killing Neighborhoods in which there is a selling of drugs Neighborhoods that are full of, that are full of all sorts of munkarat And all sorts of crime Then the matter is أكد وأشد the matter is more emphasized and it is more severe and it is more serious that we abstain from sitting and congregating in the streets. That we abstain from sitting and congregating in the streets. Ayyuhal Muslim, where are we from this? Except for the person who has a need and who can protect himself from the mafasid. How many other problems in our community come from a person not having the ability to lower his gaze? Of what is in the streets, looking at the women that are haram, looking at those things from the dunya that are a temptation for him, that keep pulling him back into the streets, reminding him of what he used to have, or who he used to be, or the status that he used to have, that he should have left for the sake of Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Where is a person from hating the munkarat that occur in his heart? And if he hated them in his heart, then he will be far away from observing them and far away from being around those affairs. How many problems will be solved in our community? If the people were to follow this one hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I warn you of sitting in the streets. I warn you of sitting and congregating in the streets. Ayyuhal Muslim, an entire culture has been propped up and promoted and force fed down the necks and the throats of the people promoting this, the culture of the streets and the dress of the streets and the music of the streets and everything connected to the streets in order to keep the people stuck and stupid in order to keep the people ignorant in order to keep the people downtrodden in order to keep the people in a pathetic situation and we as Muslims it is supposed to be that we have an effect upon them and that we are around them that they are affected by us and that we are not affected by them and where are we from that? where are we from that? Allah wa ta'ala He said in the Quran وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَا يَسْشَرِ لَهُ الْحَدِيثِ 
ليضل عن سبيل الله بغير علم ويتخذها هزوا And from the people are those who purchase idle speech, false talk, false entertainment ليضل عن سبيل الله They used to hire people to sing while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was calling the people to la ilaha illallah to distract the people from Islam. They used to hire the people to tell stories while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was calling the people to the stories of the Prophets and their messengers and the salihin and the righteous from their nations. They used to tell the people the stories of the Persians and the Romans and of these ones and those ones to distract them from the remembrance of Allah تبارك وتعالى ليضل عن سبيل الله to misguide the people from the path of Allah without knowledge ويتخذها هزوا and they take the path of Allah as an object of mockery and they take the path of Allah تبارك وتعالى as an object of mockery so the people would invest without any profit without any benefit they would invest from their money to, pre- to prevent the people from the religion of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and to keep the people downtrodden and ignorant and stuck and stupid and now today the people are making a ton of money they are not only investing but there is an entire culture that is built up by the shayateen by the Allah, bal al insaniyah by the enemies of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and much rather the enemies of the entire human race to keep the people fooled and we are supposed to have an effect upon the people and they are not supposed to have an effect upon us and we are supposed to know the reality because the majority of us they come from that and the majority of us are still surrounded by it and the person who was success the person who was successful he is the one who is admonished by seeing what happens to others. Knowing what not to do and who not to be and how not to be. He learns a lesson by seeing what happens to others. When he sees what happens to others, he said, Alhamdulillah, illadhi afana mi mabtala kabi wa faddalana ala kathiri mi man khalaqa tafdeela. All praise is due to Allah who spared us from what he tested that person with. And gave us a degree of virtue over the rest of mankind. Not having tested us with what he tested the rest of mankind. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala anqadakum bil Islam. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala saved you from Islam. But a majority of us are still ankle deep, or knee deep, or waist deep, or neck deep into the streets. And a cesspool of khubuf, and a cesspool of khaba'ith, and a cesspool of filth, surrounded by everything that is hated by Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala and was warned against by the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. What will be a fair estimation of those who set foot in this masjid on a weekly basis that are still in that condition? Would 30% be too many? 40% be too many? 50 or 60 or 70% of the people sitting here right now be too many? Yajli soon fit turuqat sitting on the streets approving what occurs in the streets, engaging in the street life. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He gave you Islam. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He gave you guidance. Alayka an tu athira fihim wa la tata'atharu bihim. You are supposed to have an effect upon them. They are not supposed to have an effect upon you. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He said, Afaman kana maytan, فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كَمَنْ مَثَلُهُ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجِ مِنْهَا He said as a person who was dead, his heart was dead, he was upon kufr and shirk, he was upon darkness in his statements and his actions, he was upon darkness in his belief and his intention, he was upon ظُلُمَاتِ بَعْضُهَا فَوْقَ بَعْضُ He was a condition, he was in a condition of a multitude of darknesses, Compounded one upon another upon another. And then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ali took him from the condition of his heart being dead. He was made ten. فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ And we restored him back to life. We revived him. وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ And we gave him a light to walk amongst amongst the people with. To walk amongst the midst of the people with. We gave him a light. 
so that he can walk amongst the people with this light and be an imam for others and be a guide for others and be a leader for others to have an effect upon them to pull those that he has the ability to pull into what he is upon so long as he is safe from fitna in doing so so long as he is safe from being tried in doing so but how in the world will a person do that who doesn't have knowledge? How in the world will a person do that who is still doing the same things that they are doing? And they said that if what you were upon was correct, anta awla nasi bi wa ahaku an ta'amala bi, you are the first of people who should act upon it. And you are the most rightful of people who should act upon it. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, مثل ha ulaqu ta'u turuq. He said, these people are like highway robbers. They stand upon the sirat al-mustaqeem. They stand upon the straight path, saying, halumu ilayna, saying, come and be with us. Accept Islam. Come and be with us. While their actions are saying, la tasma'u ilayhim. Don't listen to them. For verily, if what they were upon was the truth, if they really believed what they said, they would have been the first people to act upon it. They would have been the first people to act upon it. Hasbunallah wa ni'ma al wakil. Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala is sufficient for us. And He is the best of guardians, tabaraku wa ta'ala. Where are we from the advice of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Iyakum al jurusa fi turuqat. I warn you of sitting and congregating in the streets. And our streets are not like their streets. And our neighborhood was not, our neighborhoods are not like their neighborhoods. Where are we from this advice of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbi wa sallam? And by Allah Ta'ala, if a person was to leave them for Allah, if he was to leave that environment for Allah, Allah will give him a better environment. And if he was to leave those people for the sake of Allah, Ta'ala, and hate what they were upon for the sake of Allah, Ta'ala, and abandon them for the sake of Allah, Ta'ala, no matter who they are or how close they are to Him, Allah Ta'ala will replace those people with people that are much better. It's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. It is the best decision that you'll ever make in your life to change your environment. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said about the man who killed 99 persons as we mentioned yesterday in the Khutbah to Eid. And he finished with 100 persons and he murdered 100, the 100th person. And then he asked the scholar, Haliya bin Tawbah, is there any repentance available for me? Can I be forgiven by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? And the scholar, he said, Naam. He said, yes. He said, there is an earth. There is a part of the earth, a land, where the people, Ya'budun Allah, Fadhab ilayhim wa'bud Allah ma'ahum. So go to them and worship Allah alongside them. Go where the believers are. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa kunu ma'an sadiqeen. And be with those that are truthful and genuine in their faith. Be with the believers. Be with the believers. And never return back to your land, for verily it is an evil land. Never return back to your land, verily it is an evil land. This is something that cannot be delayed. It is a bayan. It is a clarification that cannot be delayed. Get out of the streets. Get your children out of the streets. Advise your brothers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And tell them, Man taraka shay'an lillah. And whoever leaves something for Allah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will give him better than it. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka. Alhamdulillahi wahda. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala man la nabiya ba'da. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi amma ba'du. From the most beautiful things about our religion is that the person who implements Islam and understands Islam and loves Islam that he will be perpetually increasing in goodness. He will be getting better and better and better according to his understanding and his love and his implementation of the religion. While the rest of the people, because they are upon ignorance and because they want other than the hereafter and because they don't love what Allah wa ta'ala revealed upon his Prophet wasallam, and because what they enjoy is the khubuf what they enjoy is filth, and what they enjoy is what is hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are perpetually getting worse. To the point that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
He informed us, مَا مِنْ عَامٍ إِلَّا وَالَّذِي بَعْدَهُ شَرٌ مِنْ حَتَّى تَلْقَوْ رَبَّكُمْ There is not a year that passes except that the one that comes after will be worse than it. Until you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the reality. You should be increasing in goodness. You should be getting better and better and better as the time goes on. Our community should be growing and improving and getting better and better and better year after year after year. We should be improving in our situation. Our numbers should be increasing. Our understanding should be increasing. Our character should be improving. Everything about our behavior and our statements, our da'wah to the kuffar should be getting better and should be getting stronger as the time goes on. If a person finds himself in a situation where they are getting worse, or where they cannot improve their situation, they must leave that environment that they are in. If they are trying putting their reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For without a doubt, you can never do it without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Putting your reliance and your trust upon Allah and begging and imploring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you in obeying Him, to help you in improving your situation, to help you in staying away from sin and disobedience, to help you in learning your religion. If you, if you see that you, and you realize that you are trying your best and your situation isn't improving, you need to leave from your environment entirely. You should find a different city, a better city to move to. You should find a better place of the earth to move to. And beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his assistance. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا ينبغي للمؤمن أن يضل نفسه يتعرض للبلاء فيما لا يطيق. It is not befitting for the believer to humiliate himself by subjecting himself to being tested in a manner that he cannot bear. Al-Imam Ibn Abdul Barr, rahimahullah ta'ala, he brought this hadith under the chapter heading of when a person is in a position, in a situation where they cannot make the money that they need to support their family, where they cannot get the employment that they need to take care of their responsibilities. So how much more so is it the case? How much more so is it the case when it is harming your religion, if it is harming your dunya, and it becomes mandatory because it is harming your dunya to go to a better place, then how about when it is harming your religion? Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ali said, وَقُولِ عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ And say to my servants, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ Those who believe to have taqwa of your Lord, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَأَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعًا Those that do good will get the good in the life of this world. If you do good, Allah will reward you with the good. And the earth of Allah is spacious. And the earth of Allah is spacious. Meaning if you are doing the good and your situation is not improving, find somewhere else to go. Find a different community. Get out of town. Get off of the streets. Brothers and sisters, we beg you. By Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you and ask your brothers for their advice and change your environment and a majority of people will find themselves in such a situation and they say they don't have the ability to leave we say it reminds us of the man who was eating with the left hand and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam he said eat with your right hand for verily the shaitan eats with his left hand and he said, Mustatat. He said, I don't have the ability. I don't have the ability. The Prophet وسلم, he said, May you not have the ability. May you not have the ability. The ulama they say because he combined between two things. He was too proud and he was too lazy at the same time. Many people they won't change their environment because they are complacent and they are lazy. There are people whose situations were worse than yours. And he will enter the streets deeper than you were. Who were tested with the dunya worse than you were ever tested with the dunya. And they left that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They saw the harms. They saw the evils of that. And they find themselves in a better situation. And they find themselves in better company. And they find themselves with better companions and better friends. Those that will advise them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who being around them. It's like al ghada wa dawa It is like a cure for them. And it is like nourishment for them. 
it causes them to become stronger and stronger and stronger. As opposed to being in the company of people that by Allah are like the Salaf al Salih. They used to say, La tu jali sul hayawanat. Do not sit with the animals. Do not sit with the animals. Faqila wa man al hayawanat. They said, Who do you mean by the hayawanat? The person who doesn't have any knowledge of his religion. What about a person who hates the religion? What about a person who is a disbeliever? What about a person who is involved in every type of criminal activity that you can imagine? Who is involved in every type of sin and disobedience that you can imagine? What would they have said about being around such a person? What would they have said about being around such a people? And the effect that such people would have upon a person? The Prophet sallallahu wa sallam, he said, Ghaddu al-Basar. He said, lower your gaze. Lower your gaze. Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala. He said, the person who lowers his gaze for the sake of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, and who lowers his vision for the sake of Allah, from looking at that which he is pleased with, from that which is haram from the things of the dunya, of woman or whatever, that is haram for him to look at. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala reward him with what is better because he lowered his vision from that which he liked to look at, Allah will give him vision in his heart and understanding in his heart and ma'rifah and fahim in his heart. And he will find al-unsu bi dhikrillah. He will find comfort in the remembrance of Allah and the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will find himself uncomfortable in such an environment on account of lowering his vision. On account of lowering his vision. Wa kaful aba. And spare the people from any harm on your part. The Prophet sallallahu said, and where are the people from that? That are inside of the streets, that are dealing in the streets, selling drugs, selling narcotics to the end of it. Or the Prophet sallallahu he informed that they are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala cover the faults of the Muslims. And may Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala give the Muslims the insight to cover their own faults. For verily, kullu ummati mu'afa illa al-mujahirun. The affairs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the entirety of my ummah will be pardoned except for those who publicize their sins. Except for those that are openly disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, وَكَفُ الْأَذَى And spare the people from your harms. There is no such thing as vigilante justice in Islam, brothers and sisters. There is no such thing as somebody comes and gets you and so you're going to put an end to the situation. Who in the world told you that would be the end? So somebody kills somebody that's close to you. You kill somebody that's close to them or them. And you think that the matter is over. You think that the matter is over like that? Allah tabarak wa ta'ali sawa lakum fil qisas hayatun ya ulul albab. That in the laws dealing with al qisas that are administered by the ruler of the Muslims. They are not administered by the individual or by the group. And the law is dealing with retribution. It's life for you. The ulama of Islam, they say, because the, before these laws were revealed, a person, his family member will be killed. And he will go back and kill the family member of another. They will come back and kill two of his. He will go back and kill three of theirs. They will come back and kill four of his. He will go back and kill five of theirs. To the point that there will be a war that would extend for the periods of generations. Nobody knows where it began. But kaful Abba. Remove harm from the people. Take it to Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تبارك wa ta'ala. سَيَنْتَقِمْ لِلْمَظْلُومِينَ Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, He will get an intiqam. He will give vengeance on behalf of those that are oppressed. إِيَّاكُمْ وَدَعْوَةَ الْمَظْلُومِ فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابِ Beware of the dua of the oppressed person. There is no barrier between Allah and His dua. Take it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but withhold from harming the people in a manner that is not permitted in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned in his book Madaris al-Salikin in a number of places that there are people with different types of temperaments people with different types of mannerisms he said فَمِنْهُمْ he said from the people are those people and you have the mannerism of an aqrab and the mannerism of a scorpion or the mannerism of a snake. He said there are people that just like the scorpion and the snake, when it builds up its venom within it, when it builds up its venom within it, it starts to become hot. It starts to, be, to feel pain 
and it will not be able to find relief until it releases its poise. He said, Dawatul. He said, he said, from the people are those nufus that are kadawatul sumum. Those souls that are like poisonous creatures. That are like poisonous creatures that only find relief by injecting their venom into someone else, by watching someone else suffer. He said, and they find pleasure with that. And they find pleasure with that, like a person finds pleasure with his shahwa, with his lust and his desires when he has intimacy. There are sick people out here in these streets. There are disgusting people out here in these streets. It is sunnatun madhiyah, adma mujaratul sufaha. It is an old sunnah going back to the earliest generations of Islam that we do not antagonize the fools, that we do not pick fights with the foolish, because you don't know where it will end. When the jahilun speak to them, they say words that are free of sin or disobedience or of any type of harm. People that work with intelligence, people that know that they should let things go, kaful other. They withhold their harms from their people and they don't involve themselves into debates and disputes and fit in with people that are like that, people that are petty, people that will hold grudges, people that. Allah musta'an. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, Wal amru bin ma'roof an nahi an munkar. And ordering the good and forbidding the evil. And ordering the good and forbidding the evil is a right of the street. And ordering the good and forbidding the evil is a right of the street. And a person who finds himself in an environment surrounded by munkarat, where he has the ability to leave it, hada dalilun ala ruddahu. This is the evidence that he is pleased with what is occurring. This is an evidence that he is pleased with what is occurring. As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ali said, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَرَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارُ وَمَا لَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ أَوْلِيَاءِ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ And do not incline towards those who wrong their own souls. The Salaf al-Salih, the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Tabi'een, they said, لَا تُجَالِسُوهُمْ وَلَا تُدَاهِنُوهُمْ Do not sit with them. Do not compromise your religion for them. Do not Hold your tongue from ordering the good and forbidding the evil. A person who finds himself in a situation where he is surrounded by munkarat at all times, where the people are ordering with the evil and forbidding the good, where the people are calling to everything hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the evidence of his being pleased with that affair. If he's being pleased with that situation, وَالرَّضَ بِالْمَعْصِيَ حُكْمُهُ حُكْمُهَا And the ruling of that disobedience applies to him. If he is pleased with kufr, then that is kufr. If he is pleased with innovation, it is innovation. If he is pleased with major sins, it is like he himself has done those major sins. Because he is pleased with it. The ulama of Islam, they say, don't you see? Some of the imams of the salaf, they say, don't you see how Allah wa ta'ala destroyed entire peoples for an act of oppression that was committed by one person. Like when they killed the she-camel. When they killed the she-camel. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ali he obliterated an entire nation of people because they were pleased with it. They were pleased with it. They approved of it. The person who approves of sin and disobedience is like the person who does it themselves. I warn you of sitting in the streets. Stay away from the streets. Except for that which is absolutely necessity, uh, necessary for you of taking care of the needs of your families and going to work, and so on and so forth, and the likes of these affairs, and for those brothers that are merchants, and the likes of these affairs. But if you find yourself in the streets, then you must lower your gaze, and you must withhold from harming the people, and you must order the good to the best of your ability, and forbid the evil. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an yaghfir lana wa yarhamna. We ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to forgive us, and to have mercy upon us. We ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, humma yaghfir lana wa lil muslimin. والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات Oh Allah have mercy upon us and forgive us and forgive all of the believers and all of the Muslims those that are alive from them and those that have passed and are deceased from them هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى